Okay. All right. Oh, let me get myself together here. It's a little after six on uh, Monday evening. So let's go ahead and get started with our session here. Uh, I sure want to do something a little different today. Before I ask if there are any questions or comments, uh, I want to remind everybody we ended yesterday with uh, Craig reading a text message that S had sent, uh, sent in, and uh, S was not able to explain it as we were talking about uh, several several things there. But I want to ask him, he has to leave early tonight. Uh, he has another engagement. So what I thought we'd start with is him uh, talking about what he heard yesterday that, that prompted his text message and, and looking at his text message. And let's uh, discuss that, and then we'll see if we have any questions or comments, okay? So he can, uh, if he has to leave, we can, we can go ahead and, and get started with that first, if that's okay with you guys. Uh, Yes, are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm popping. I'm at a, a, a international conference, and this is the first time we've had one in a couple of years because of COVID. So I've been been popping in and out the last couple of weekends here, and I've got uh, two more days left here. But but yeah, I'm I'm here. So. Okay. Uh, we we talked about a, a lot of things yesterday. So uh, where were we in our discussion? Uh, first, tell them what you what what uh, your your text message was, and then uh, kind of bring us up to speed, please, sir. Uh, no, yeah, I was listening to everybody go back and forth, and I, I know I heard George. Um, he was talking about you know not being able to work together, and I, I thought that you know, and someone had a question about how do we move together, and and, and I think we all recognize that we're uh, you know individually. We all have different strengths and weaknesses, but you know all of that's really for the greater good. And, and so uh, there are things that we all each bring to the table from a recognition standpoint and an understanding standpoint. And and I, what I was just telling Craig that you know the the one thing when you when you look at a movement and and you know and when things move they they're always in motion like nothing stagnant and. The thing that we have to do is is, is move together in rhythm. And I, I wanted to say it's Barbara, maybe uh, well, that's push, but I, I think one of the things we do is move. We once we become in rhythm and in harmony, and you know, when you look at the you know, tree of knowledge of good and evil, there's always a certain there. And like you know, like you said yesterday, it's not always going to be fifty-fifty, but it's the rhythm and the mixture of things and, and how you move together. And, and and that's what you uh, that's what you first acknowledge that there has to be some sort of harmony, and that harmony is created by understanding we're all we're each Elohim and we're in our connection is is that, and so when we understand our connection, the movement is pretty is pretty simple and easy because now when you understand the connection, I don't have to anticipate what you're going to do, what your move's going to do. I know you're going to make the the right move because the connection we have, it's it, nothing has to be said, nothing has to be acknowledged. You know, um, it's sort of like you you wouldn't expect anything else, but for that movement, that person to make that decision. So that that comes with understanding our connection and the, and the rhythm that we have is based on that connection and how we move. And, and and that's what I sort of uh, saw yesterday is that although we were trying to figure out how you move forward, we're always the solution to all of the issues. It, it's within us. It's within each other. And we just have to sort of get in rhythm. We talk about breathing in rhythm all the time. We talk about moving in rhythm and regulating our breathing and just, you know, basically calming down. And that's how we move forward together. It doesn't have to look a certain way. We don't have to really understand it. We just have to understand our connection. And and so that's what I was, um, you know, the gist behind my text to Craig. I just I was going to listen more than really couldn't say anything. I had a lot of background noise, but I was you know, definitely listening on my headset to my earpiece. Okay. Thank you. 
and that does make sense. Uh, Pastor, are you on? I am. I I, I remember on, on yesterday uh, I I spoke to you about S's text. Do you have a, a follow up or a piece in that that you may see? Please, sir. Um, I try, I'm trying to remember the points that reach the text again, please. Yes. Uh, do you have it in front of you? Hold, hold on a minute. Let me find oh, yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just basically I told Craig that you know, when I was listening and the question that came up was how do we move forward and uh, how do we work together? And I just said, you know, we, we, we are working together. The first thing we need to do is, is is recognize the connection we have with each other. And once we recognize the connection, our thoughts and concepts and our hearts and actions will all be put in the rhythm. And so we move forward because we'll be in rhythm together. Uh, it's no different than walking, you know, one step, one foot in front of the other. But when you're talking about this from a concept standpoint, and how do we uh, move together? How do we move forward and work together? The working together comes from recognizing somebody's, you know, one's connection. As though we we work together as as creating the faith and foundation. And although we may have different ideas or or different ways of understanding, the connection to those places, even if we don't see each other for two years, we understand that connection. And the trust is there, the commitment is there, you know, between each other. So it's easier to um, to move forward and trust that we're making the right decision because, you know, that intuition, that connection, that understanding of each other and understanding of who we are, that we're basically a reflection of each other and that, that connection helps us to get in rhythm. It helps us to, uh, because the one thing that always holds you back is what friction is, um, can, you know, malcontent or, or or distrust so you remove all the things that hold you back because you understand your connection those things don't even come to play and so you move forward in rhythm because you you take away the things that would actually distract you or or, or hold you back from moving together and then that relationship becomes one because of the connection and understanding we have I heard the explanation. What I need, there are three things there in that text that caught my attention. And um, I um, actually need to hear the text itself instead of the explanation. Okay. I agree with the explanation, but I saw something else in there. Yeah, the text I sent to Craig was, I just basically told him it was just, uh, Craig, hey, I'm, I'm in listening mode and working, but... Um, we need truth, and we also need to recognize our connection and rhythm. Okay, that's it. Well, yeah. What I saw in that is this, thank you, uh, it is, um, it's impossible for us to know truth or to apprehend or be apprehended by truth if we are not in rhythm with the universe. And it is impossible for us to know truth or be in rhythm with the universe if we don't recognize that all of us are continuously connected, that we are one. And there are no disconnects. There is no disconnect uh, between humanity at all. And that is the reason that when we, when we are apprehended by the truth that we seek, um, we, we recognize that we are in rhythm because we see what the universe is showing us or we hear what the universe is showing us. And we recognize also that in spite of uh, a great portion of humanity not being on this journey, not even uh, desiring to be, uh, that we are still connected to each other. We are still one. And there is no way possible for us not to be um, interconnected with each other because we were created as one. Does that make sense? 
Yes, I, I just and I sort of like uh, you you articulating a lot better. I just didn't want us to lose sight of the importance of our understanding our connection. Because you know we say things like we can't work with this person, we can't do that. That's not true. You're right. just saying that you understand your connection. Right. I agree with that. I, I, no, I was just thinking the uh, the other part of that argument that came up yesterday was uh, the the external thing of listening to other people. And it's other people that say how disconnected we are. We buy into that portion, even if it's uh, not even someone from a different race, even if it's from from from, you know, if you want to look at it, African down in Africans or or saying negative things, what you're saying is what we're doing, and that bond, that rhythm, supersedes all those type of distractions. So uh, it, it doesn't matter what others see or think, or and and it's certainly, you know, we we don't need to to always buy into every negative thing that people say. About us, because the, the the conversation was about making that distinctions between, I think, uh, different uh, races and, and ethnic back, uh, uh, groups. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just it, it, trying to pull it all in and and, uh, and agree with what you guys are saying. Well, it's, uh, uh, it's impossible for uh, even if people who don't who don't particularly like us, uh, it doesn't matter. People didn't like Jesus. Um, Jesus was treated uh, by the Romans the same way that we are treated by the enslavers. There was no difference. Mm -hmm. However, it does not mean that we are disconnected even from those who seek to enslave us or however they treat. It doesn't matter. We are still connected to them, and we are connected them for a purpose. And without us being in connect, being interconnected with them, there would never be balance. It's not possible to have balance if if we don't see the reality of without if we don't see the reality that we are all interconnected, and we have no reason to really be angry with anything or anyone. Because without them, there would be no journey for us to travel towards truth. And, and I can get deeper into that later if I have to, but that's why I see this. I think it's a great point to bring up. Hey, Pastor. Is the, 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 the scripture in Genesis... Um, it's in um, 11, and you can start reading from verse 6 or whatever. I'm going to let you know. During the time of men were working together, building the Tower of Babylon, I don't know if this coincides with this. That's the reason why we won't be able to work together like we, like we did in the beginning, doing everything together. And almost like thinking together before God uh, um, came down to confuse them. But they'd be talking in di all different languages, whoever language they were talking with, they went away without, with the, each other like that. Um, that. The answer to that, Charles, lies in the meaning of um, the Tower of Babel. A and um, I, I don't, I'm trying to remember because we've talked about this before. Um, I don't, I don't believe that it means language as there are different languages in the earth as much as I believe uh, that our, um, we speak a different language. Let me show you what I'm saying. If we're talking about baptism in our, in, in our discussions on the phone, and there's a discussion of baptism within the confines of the church. Those are those is the same language, but it means something totally different. We are not speaking the same language. 
even though uh, is it I got you. The, okay okay gotcha. I got you yeah anyone else questions or comments okay well um let's let's start from that point then i i, I guess i just asked the question you do if you have any other questions other than what we just started with i knew s uh s is still listening but he uh had to had to uh turn his phone off right right quick or turn his volume off i mean you know what i mean it is uh put, put himself on mute uh so i wanted to get him his question answered because i thought it was very significant but we also if there are any other points because we talked about a lot the last couple of days is there anything else that has come to your attention uh even outside of the lesson that you might want to talk about. Nothing. Yeah, Ron, okay. I got a question for you or Pastor. And um, I was uh, at work and one of the guys, they had like a revival, something going on at the church. And he came in and he was just talking about how nobody really came during the week. And then that's the older lady, that's his client, and she hasn't been coming to evening service. And um, he and he said the scripture. Um, I don't know if it's in Hebrews, something about forsake not yourselves for the gathering or something. I know I'm paraphrasing, but I. I'm thinking he took that out of context. Can somebody help me with that? Because he was saying they didn't come and they, they would rather go to the mountains and do this and not come to service. And I may be breaking up because I'm driving. Okay. Pastor, can you help us out with that? I, I, do I not forsake this. Yeah, I think it's in Hebrew. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That's where the church... Um, yeah. you, Use that scripture in order to uh, shame you into coming to the church. Okay. So, Jack, let me ask you a question on that. Let me ask you a question about that. So, are we disobeying that scripture and been disobeying it for the last couple of years? Because if you have to assemble yourself together, physically in order to be obedient to that particular scripture, then we have been disobedient for quite a while, haven't we? That yeah, wasn't I guess. How, how do yeah. you mean? We have not been we have not seen each other in two years. We have not physically gathered in over two years. And if that scripture, do, do not forsake the assembling of yourself together, uh, means that you have to physically gather or assemble yourself, then we have been disobedient to that scripture. So oh, it does. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. It, no, you can go ahead and finish. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, thanks. Gosh, I'm, I have to admit, I'm bad. It's not a uh, scripture I'm familiar with, but what is around that? What what was he, y'all? Uh, I, I, I would have to find it in order to, uh, yeah. but it's in Hebrew. Okay. Um, Jackie, was that Jackie that asked the question? Yeah, it was, and I I didn't take it. I didn't think about us. 
That's being disobedient. I didn't even think about us, but I was just thinking about what he said, and I thought, well, maybe the first time they ain't saying nothing, you know? So he's talking, but ain't nothing coming out. That's what, that's how I took it. And I said, well, maybe, um, he said, well, he's a good pastor. He, he preaches the word. And I was like, okay, I said, but maybe. And I just, I didn't want to get into an argument because I try not to talk about religion and politics at work or whatever. And I just kind of backed out. But that, that's where I was going with that. And that's what I thought. Maybe that's why they didn't come. They, it's probably the same old thing. Yeah, I uh, had a similar conversation with someone earlier this morning, and uh, as as I concluded with him, and, and actually his conclusion as well was, I think I'm better off by not going. I mean, a, a lot of uh, people take scripture out of context and uh, use it to make you feel guilty. Uh, and and uh, I, I agree with what you just said. I mean, sometimes what you're hearing may not, or not even may not, it's not enlightening anyway. So, uh, and that's that's uh, sad to say, but but true. But uh, true to how we normally do things, uh, I think. Uh, do feel a bit obligated to look that up and kind of uh, maybe look at it again at some point, I guess. But uh, so I'll, I'll uh, if you don't mind, Jackie, maybe maybe come back to that. And I don't know where it is in Hebrew and uh, might take a few minutes to look it up and kind of uh, get an understanding of it. So if you don't mind, I'll put that on the table. No, not at all, because I've been holding on to it, but I just had to, uh, get just, you know, learn my approach or whatever, how to approach it. So, and then I have another question too. This came okay. up at work too. Um, like the different translations of the Bible, you know, like the new American standard, uh, the keyword study Bible, then you got the King James version, which version is correct or, you know, Got this version. I, I, you, you do you understand what I'm trying to ask, Ron, Pastor? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. None of them are correct. Care to elaborate? Nope. I will, Miss Jack. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, translations of the Bible are based upon preconceived beliefs about what the scripture is saying. No matter what translation it is, it does not deviate from the uh, translation that came from the Catholic Church um, who translated it in Latin and, in, and uh, accepted the Greek version of it. That is one of the reasons I tell people um, don't get so caught up on quoting the scriptures. Because if you're not quoting them based upon Hebrew or Aramaic, then you are reciting someone else's translation of it. So your quoting it means nothing, especially if you don't know what it means. And it is virtually impossible to know what it means if you don't have um, if you don't have the means to search that scripture through the Hebrew or the Aramaic. And that, 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 uh, that is one of the reasons we've had so many struggles within ourselves, our group, our, the teachers especially, uh, because we had, we've had to uh, actually sit in meetings and, and doing research at the same time that we we're discussing something because uh, we want to get to the truth of what it's saying. And, and then one of the issues with that is this. The Hebrew and the Aramaic are fluid languages. And words are translated in those languages based upon the context. 
and there are different meanings to it, uh, to cover or to, um, to uh, show forth. You find that when um, you look at uh, curse, it, it, it seems to be, though the meanings of it seem to be diametrically opposed to each other. However, it's context that determines what's being said at that moment. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Ron. Yes, sir. Um, of course, we have all uh, this, this past week, we were looking in Genesis. Primarily, we focus in uh, chapter three, uh, verses 16 and read 17, anyway, parts of 17. But uh, we were looking at this because we were trying to get a clear understanding of uh, something, a question that George brought up last week when he talked about uh, wives obeying their husbands. And we we concluded by looking at the scriptures and gaining some, some uh, you know, better awareness of what is being said, that these were uh, talking about, for, at least from the Genesis perspective, uh, talking more about energy, feminine and masculine energy, and, and uh, more so, uh, uh, it, and not talking about gender at all, or people at all. So hopefully we gain some understanding of that. Uh, what I thought was interesting uh, was in, in doing some research, what I find was, and I, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, I think I kind of messed it up yesterday, looking at one aspect of it. But there are studies now that are done uh, to try to teach people at least to get them to observe uh, how to manage your masculinity and femininity. Uh, that, you know, even science is seeing that the, the benefit of bringing balance to that rather than uh, overpowering it uh, and and what was shown is, uh, and I, I use as one of the examples, uh, the, the one of the issues with women was in uh, that women try to balance it based on trying to over masculine their masculinity, meaning I measure up, I am who I am and I can do anything you can do in the boardroom or on any of these jobs and then having to come back and, and be wife and or mother uh, and, and what how much of a burden that was. What was found uh, in men mostly is a lot of uh, illnesses and sicknesses and even anxieties and and uh, you know conditions that men develop are based on the fact that they do not embrace their femininity. They sort of uh, want to keep it in submission. I guess it it, it uh, may be a sign of weakness to them. I you know uh, or just not something that they care to show uh, publicly, share publicly. And uh, it leads to a lot of physical ailments and, and other type of uh, mental uh, weaknesses, you know, that, that show up. So uh, just thought that was interesting that we are looking at this from a spiritual perspective and and trying to bring clarity to it all. And uh, based on what we just discussed, S is. Uh, comment, excuse me, y'all. I know you hear that siren. Sorry about that. But uh, based on what S is saying, with our uh, trust in each other and, and our trying to uh, be stay connected without the distractions and having the rhythm, uh, we we are bringing this type of clarity to the universe. So some of those things that I just mentioned 
uh, will also be affected by by what we do. If we don't believe that, if we don't see that, then what what are we doing at all? So uh, that is that is my belief. That is my faith, and and that is all. Uh, I think what kind of, not kind of, but what makes what we do worthwhile. But anyone else, any questions or comments on any of that? I argue that uh, the reason this study is going is because of the journey we travel. There, it is, it, there will never be um, real balanced experience by the whole of humanity until um, males began to embrace femininity and their own femininity. The craziness about men don't cry. Conf that was one, that is one of the most ignorant statements ever to be made. And I'd be, I am so appreciative that no one makes that state to, statement to me anymore. Men don't cry. I would be afraid of a man who didn't cry. Um, men, the reason the, uh, there's such uh, adversity uh, towards homosexual, homosexuals is because men are in denial of their own femininity. And this, the ones who usually protest the most against it are the ones who usually uh, have some association with it more than we think. Um, I also um, I see the, um, uh, uh, the uh, oh boy, I can't even think of the word I'm looking for. Um, the word that I'm looking for, I guess, speaks to the idea of, of seeing uh, themselves in it. And, and um, they, they are fighting that femininity. Now, I do have a belief about what um, balance actually looks like, not with your eyes, but looks like in terms of concept. And it begins with um, males embracing their femininity and women not seeing a need uh, to embrace masculinity more so than a man. Uh, one of the things that, that got to me uh, when Hillary was running for president was that she was trying to outman Trump or outman uh, Obama. She's trying to be the man in the group, but yet a woman at the same time. And that is not by her physical actions as much as it is about her um, presentations and how she approached things. She was um, she was more um, of a um, a, a war hawk uh, than than were the men she was debating against, simply because she had felt like she had to be masculine subconsciously, of course, in order for her to be accepted or for her to win the race. I do believe she would have fared much better if she had embraced who she is. And, and yes, there is masculinity, but not to the extent uh, that you uh, present yourselves as being um, more masculine than, than, than masculinity itself. There are, there are things that men do that women don't. And that women don't. And there are things that women do that men don't. Each of us have our masculine and feminine roles, yet each of us have masculinity and femininity in us. So uh, to, to, to attempt to negate that creates confusion in society, not to mention the brutality that it creates. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Of course, go ahead. So, Pastor Jay and everybody, do you think um, that because um, femininity is being suppressed, it's the reason why all these people, all these men are 
becoming transgender and um, coming out of the closet, as we say, and I'm saying that with air quotes. You think that's why everything is being um, exposed? Um, you think actually, that has something to do with it? Uh, I, actually, if you read Romans, uh, Romans tell you why things happened the way they did. Because we get we all gave up the truth for a lie, as and as a result of embracing a lie instead of embracing the truth, uh, these things transpire transpired. However, it is not up to us uh, to denigrate anyone, whether they are transgender, homosexual. And I know that's not what you were saying, Evelyn, but I want to reiterate it. It's not we have no right uh, to denigrate anyone. Uh, based upon what we call their sexuality. Um, because quite frankly, everything that happens in this earth, we are responsible for it because we have exchanged the truth for a lie. Thank you. Ms. Evelyn, does that answer your question or do you have a follow-up? Well, I guess he said, yes, I was right. I'm not sure, because <laughs> he said a lot. Um, so when you say that they substituted the truth for a lie, meaning that what, Pastor Jay? It's in Romans, uh, the first chapter, where it talks about uh, men being after men and women having uh, been for, after women. It said it's because they exchange the truth for a lie. So um, what is the truth that was exchanged for a lie? The truth about what the creator intends for, who the creator intends us to be. And that did not just start with the church. That has, that has been there forever and a day. Because believe you me, homosexuality didn't start with the church. And the very group of people who are, are so, so against homosexuality First of all, they're in love with Paul, but they don't read that part of the scripture. And secondly, uh, they are the, they're the ones who fight it the hardest. And the leadership in those groups that fight it so hard are the ones who get caught up in it themselves. And I feel like um, and the reason they are quote unquote out is because the creator is not going to allow you uh, to... Um, consciously denigrate people because they are homosexual and you're doing the same thing. And uh, you, you are, are you treating them like they're less than human, yet you are engaged in the same thing. So they're being outed. And, and I think that that should be increased uh, in terms of them being outed based upon how they treat people. The other thing is that, is that, um, Everybody against homosexuality until their child is homosexual, or, or until somebody they're close to in their family is born, then it's okay. I, I do. I remember this preacher in Georgia preaching against homosexuality virtually every Sunday, and his son stood up in church and told me he couldn't play any, uh, music for them anymore because he's homosexual. And the next Sunday. He, he was preaching that homosexuality, there's nothing wrong with homosexuality. We have to embrace homosexuality because they're human too. And half the church got up and walked out because he was being disingenuous. Thank you. Well, I'm, I, I wonder why Paul's scriptures are called Pauline scriptures. You, you guys have heard of that, I'm quite sure. The Pauline he scriptures. It. He wrote it. It's, it's specific yeah. about it. That's, it's called the Paulinian script. It's called Paul wrote them. Paul wrote more of the New okay. Testament than anybody. Uh, well, let me put it this way. More of Paul's writings was accepted as the New Testament than anyone else's writings. Yeah, and the reason why I say that, because, go ahead, go ahead, Ron, I'm sorry. No, I'm just asking you for, for clarity. Were you using the word Pauline? You, you're saying that's because the name sounds feminine? Is yes. that where, you, that where you're going? Okay. Okay. Because you don't hear anybody else. They say that about anybody else who wrote um, things in the Bible, but they always say Pauline scripture or something like that. Okay. So That has nothing to do with femininity or masculinity at all. 
that has everything to do with the preference of the Catholic Church for Paul, because Paul's writings are the writings that the whole foundation of Christianity is built on. All of the other scriptures that appear there are afterthoughts. They are more in love with what Paul wrote than they are with what Jesus wrote, because Paul was two-faced because Paul did what was convenient at the moment. That's the reason they accept Paul so readily over everyone else. Paul is an imposter. In order for anybody to accept you, what you're writing rather, even though you're wrong, you have to have some sprinklings of the truth in it. And there are sprinklings of the truth in what Paul wrote, but overall, Paul said, when Paul write, when you write things like, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. Something wrong with that. When you, when you uh, write scriptures that, that treat females as um, servants as opposed to humans, something is wrong with that. So, so, th this, 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 so this embrace of Paul has nothing to do with uh, calling him Pauline. It has nothing to do with that at all. Listen, Evan. I'm listening because, okay, so if Paul been with every wind that blow, and he say do what the Romans, when you're in Rome, do what the Romans do, a lot of stuff was going on. So that, that's my point. That's why, okay, okay. That's All my right. point. And, and look at what happened. A lot of stuff is going on in those who love Paul more than they do Jesus. It, it, the, the way they present them, to, everybody want to preach about Paul. Very few of them even understand what Jesus says, what he's talking about. No, it, I, name me, well, I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. I have never heard, I have never heard a preacher or a teacher of the scriptures, I've never heard them say that uh, water baptism is not for us. It's baptism with the Holy Spirit because John said there will come one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and that one was Jesus. And, and when Jesus came to baptize with the Holy Spirit, we also understand that Jesus never baptized anybody with water. But you're not going to hear that in church, even though it's in the scriptures. However, you will hear, hear that them say that according to the scriptures uh, in Cor uh, Corinthians, Paul said uh, women are to ask their husbands questions and be silent in the coming. So, Pastor Evan, you know, if Paul was upholding the Catholic um, religion and everything, and there's a lot of foul play going on in the Catholic Church, and you know what I'm talking about, and you saying that he ain't got no, he he wasn't, well, I don't know. But it's just something, I'm just thinking, that's all. all. I'm processing. Okay. Back up, baby. Paul did not take anything from the Catholic Church. There was no Catholic Church. It was built on the foundation of Paul's writings. That's I got that now. Okay. Okay. But I'll let you go ahead and finish. And I'm sorry for cutting you out, but yeah, no. okay. I'm, I'm getting got, it now. Got, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I'm done. Yeah, I I'm done. Okay. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. I, I, I made a statement. I want to read it. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, Romans, the first chapter, begin at verse 18. For the wrath of God is, uh, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness, men of, of all unrighteousness men who suppress the truth un, in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. 
or since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible, incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity that their bodies might be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And, and then it says, for this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural uh, function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way, also men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. Everything that happens in this earth, nobody is to blame for it except those who have dishonored God. They say they know him, but they, but they do not deal with the truth of who God is. They deal with the lie. And the lie is there in order, to, in order for them to exalt themselves, in order for them to manipulate and control other people. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, that does not give anyone the right to rail against homosexuality or any other sexuality. It does not give them the right to do that. That is not justification for denigrating anyone. The, the message is that anything that, that, that's in this earth that disobeyed God I'm sorry, the reason we have so many issues is because of our Hello? Hello? Pastor, are you still up? Yeah, I'm here. I uh, moved again, I guess. What's the last you thing you heard? The reason we have so much issues is because because we have uh, we have exchanged the truth for a lie. Which uh, and now Paul dwells on this issue of homosexuality. Why he does that, I have no clue. He also uh, talks about worshiping the created as opposed to the creator. What does that mean? Well, you worship a communion table. You worship a cross. You, you worship all the things that men have made with their hands. The, the most sacred things in, in the church, regardless of denomination, are those things of implements of death and the implements of, uh, and things that we make with our hands. There is nothing at all to deify the communion table or anything else that we use in a church not even the building. Now, Jesus said, I would, in regards to communion, that he would not drink it anymore until he drank it with us. What was Jesus saying? Then Jesus said, uh, do this as often as you may in remembrance of me. So Jesus is saying, you don't have to do communion every Sunday or every first Sunday. Do it as often as it takes for you to remember me. The only reason we do it is because of the people who taught us religion did a literal translation of the scripture, and they embraced every single word that Paul said without even uh, trying to understand 
what he was trying to say, which was mostly nothing, uh, uh, only to uh, ingrace himself with people, ingratiate himself with people he was speaking to. So, so we 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 have to um, be, be be aware that everything in the scripture is definitely true, but the scripture speaks of the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. We have to be able to discern, and the way we do that is by looking at what Jesus said and how things. Uh, 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 compare to each other in, in relationship to what Jesus said and the other scriptures. What am I saying? Jesus didn't say nothing about homosexuality. Nothing. But that's one of the biggest things in the church, homosexuality. And, and, and it's perpetuated by predominantly men. And I wonder sometimes if they, if they are so against something because they're experiencing desires in themselves and they're fighting the mirror. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Well, that's what, <clears throat> that's what I was, Ron, that's what I was thinking about. I mean, a lot of preachers and people hop on something, they knock it real hard and them the ones you, you have to watch. You know what I mean? Don't so, watch them, baby. Don't watch them. Just let them be themselves. Yeah, I know. Okay. But it makes you wonder. Okay, I'm done. Now, I was hard on homosexuals for a while until I learned that and to understand, you know, what I was doing. Because, like, you know, when I found out homos, you know, I'm just like them. I don't do the act, but what I'm saying, I'm like, they just like me, I'm like them. I can't Condemn them right. because the only person who can condemn them is God. In actuality, Charles, all of us were brought up in the church and all of us believe the same thing. And I'm one of the people who railed so hard because I was taught that. And then I went back to the church where I had spoken directly to some homosexuals and apologized to them. And because when you know better, you do better. And if you're too big to apologize, you, you're too big for the truth. I can buy a bio for a dog. <laughs> okay. Ronald? Yes, sir. I, uh, I see something. I, 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 I see a question. I don't see the answer, but I see a question. And uh, it's kind of late. I didn't know if I need to ask it or not. Maybe. Uh... Roy. Yes, sir. Ask the, ask the question. If it's, if it's going to be long, we just table it. Okay. My question is, you know, you guys, it's along the same lines, but uh, just as we look at creation story and we talked about light and darkness and the relationship between the two we talked about good and evil and the relationship between the two heaven and earth uh masculine feminine energy can the same also be said of the tree of knowledge and good and evil and the tree of life um and this be the difference be not only that how do I'm not sure how to even ask this question. Can can the can God may have did God say that to them or to the the the, the, the masculine energy? Did he make the statement because it was a choice? I know what is in you and what choice will you make in other words what if it was one tree and based on your motives you made it tree of knowledge and good and evil so it becomes that based on your purpose or your intent for eating it i'm not even sure that makes sense do, do you understand what i'm saying 
I if you go what back, you're asking. I understand. Yeah, if you go back and look at this, uh, and you see the 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 serpent, uh, it, it, now, now think about this. See, it, 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 this is this is something I think that's that's beautifully hidden in in plain sight. Is the Creator speaks to each one of them individually as though they're all external of each other. And that to me is uh, hiding something in, in, in plain sight. It, it's something that simple. Uh, and so when you, when you look at this thing, as, as we have discussed before, you, you get the thought that these are two physical different bodies and she takes something to the man. Uh, but in looking at this and looking at the serpent part of it, and it talks about uh, oh, the, the, if you get into that and, and look at, follow what the serpent needs, it talks about deviations and 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 be trying to see something uh using astrology or using magic or whatever it's talking about uh going somewhere else in your mind so this if, if somebody else see this maybe you can help me kind of kind of say this uh, i i think that the cleverness and the intent of this is what made it evil, what made it bad. Uh, it was it was something that was purposeful, and that part was okay. But I think the intent of it is what the issue is here. Um, and I know I, that I sounds like... No, I don't think it was bad at all. I... What the way what I'm seeing here, first of all, um, the creator spoke to Adam. Not a, he did not speak to a woman, he did not speak to a man, he did not speak to masculinity, he did not speak to femininity, he spoke to both. He spoke to Adam and, and gave instructions. Those instructions were given, knowing, and all of this, none of this is physical at all, all of it is spiritual. All of it is conceptual, okay? None of it is spiritual. I mean, none of it is uh, uh, physical. Uh, when the Creator uh, spoke uh, to this entity, uh, Adam, the Creator knew what was going to happen. If it had not, if it was bad, then there is no redemption. I, this is what I truly believe with every fiber of my being. That, first of all, is totally, totally misconstrued in this translation. This is a, a space where you have a choice between functionality and dysfunctionality. The tree of knowledge and good and evil should never have been there. Functionality and dysfunctionality. And if you, if you embrace dysfunctionality as opposed to functionality, then you are extricated from this place where, it, where life eternal continues. If you are not, then you are unripened forever. In order for the Adam to be the image that it was created in, it had to know both functionality and dysfunctionality. Why? Because the one who created this entity knows both, experienced both. If there was not an experience by the one who created it, then it would not have existed in the first place. 
So the whole idea of this dysfunctionality was for the purpose of bringing this entity to a place where it could be what it was truly created to be. In other words, if there was no man that for this entity to bring to a place of balance, then that would that then we would not be in the image of Elohim because Elohim brought balance or Elohim brought into the existence Adam, brought into existence humans, brought into existence entities that are able to, to uh, bring balance to the extent that so is uh, so as below is above, so as above is below, have that propensity without friction that cannot happen. So this is what I'm saying. The concept of slavery, the concept of greed, the concept of murder, the concept of robbery thievery, the concept of raping nations, the concept of, of dehumanizing people because of what they look like, those concepts are purposely here. And they are here for a reason. All of what I said, the name is dysfunctionality. All of this dysfunctionality is here for a reason. And the perpetuators of this dysfunctionality are subject to being brought to a place of balance, a place of functionality. How? By virtue of the teachings and desires of those who all of this darkness, all of this confusion has been perpetuated against. In other words, because of the, because these concepts of controversy of, of uh, what we call evil and racism, all these other things, because these concepts were brought into being, it takes the spirituality of the spiritual human to bring those who, who um, perpetuate those concepts to a place where they are functional also. And that is the creation of a different type of man that's created in the image of those spiritual forces who truly understand uh, what, uh, what, what this uh, story in the garden is all about. I hope I'm clear. If not, please raise questions and I'll try to clear. Does that make sense, Ron? Yes, sir. It makes sense. It makes sense. I'm just, just, just thinking. And I, I do. I do expect you to be more over uh, because I know I said a lot and I said some things that are different than anything we've ever talked about before. Probably. Yeah, and 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 some of the some of my questions are. I probably should ask you on the side because I don't want to be confusing to anybody. I don't want. I don't. Know, I, th I think we've. Well, but done a lot they, of won't get, they won't get answers. No one will get answers or clarity if you don't. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm. Uh, let, let me. Okay, you can do it later. But let me say this. I want okay. to re reiterate something. Okay. There is no way that we will ever be able to influence humanity with truth if we skirt or don't deal with the hard things that needs to be said. We cannot look at this as being physical. We cannot look at this as being a man, a woman, or a race of people, no. This is spiritual, spiritual entities on both sides. One is dysfunctional and the other one is not. And the other one became dysfunctional because 
of its interaction with this functionality. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I want to, a uh, couple of things there, the way they were that I did not have time to to look them up in the, uh, in, in a different writing, you uh, know, to, to, to kind of look at some, uh, some wording, how things are worded. But yeah, so, yeah okay. I, I'll, I'll come back. Yeah. Come back to that. In the, and I hope y'all uh, that was clear to you and, and my question wasn't confusing at all. Uh, if so, please again, as Pastor said, ask a question. Uh, write it down. We'll, we'll we'll remember it. I like the way the rep put it, uh, dysfunctional and functional, because yeah, that way okay. you have to, you yeah. have to worry about the, the two trees again now. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? How we doing, y'all? I hope it's making sense to you. Well, um, I think we have covered quite a bit tonight, and uh, a little after seven, I got about 17, which isn't bad. You talked about a lot in an hour. So, uh, again, if you have any questions, please write them down. Any uh, any scriptures you want to clear up or talk about, please write that down as well. And uh, hope everybody have a great week. And if you have no other concerns, then uh, I'm bid you good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ron. All right. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Pastor. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. You too.